The world is full of mysteries, some pretty famous, others not so much. Some proven to be hoaxes, others still remain a mystery. However, we already made a list of 10 real life mysteries, but there are much more to cover, so in this video, we gathered 10 more real life mysteries you probably never knew about. Number 1. The Mount Shasta Mysteries Mount Shasta, located in California, US, is a known location for hiking and tourism. But in 2011, some strange events have been reported. While on a camping trip, a three-year-old boy was lost in the forest surrounding Mount Shasta. According to witnesses, he was gone within a second. A searching party was quickly formed by other campers, and the boy was found five hours later. The boy claimed he was abducted by a robot-looking doppelganger of his grandmother and taken to a cave filled with spiders, then quickly sent off to go back to his parents. One might think the boy was traumatized by being lost, so he made up this bizarre story, but things get even stranger. The same morning, just hours before the disappearance of the boy, the real grandmother who was also there in the camp claims she woke up face down in the dirt, having been removed from her tent and sleeping bag. She noticed she had a spider bite on her neck and felt strangely emotionless and ill. The only strange thing she could recall was seeing red eyes shining through the trees in her flashlight the night before, which she thought was a deer. Two more bizarre incidents happened around Mount Shasta in the same year. A man hiking in the mountains heard a beautiful singing of a female voice. Curious, he followed it, becoming lost in the woods. He claims he was abducted and taken to a dark chamber in a cave. A tall figure with unnatural blue eyes appeared and shared secret information, which he declined to provide details of. He was found by a search and rescue team weeks later, dazed and confused, walking aimlessly in the woods. That same month, another man got lost in the mountain, but he wasn't so lucky. His body was found the next morning, with no shoes on. Mount Shasta is known for containing all kinds of local folklore about underground tunnels and hollow earth type theories. Stories of underground tunnels extend further back into history, to the Native American tribes who have inhabited this region for thousands of years. Some tribes have admitted that the locations and entrances of these tunnels are a guarded secret which has never been shared with the outside world. The region surrounding Mount Shasta contains thousands of caves, the vast majority of which have never been explored. Number 2. Olivia Mabel's Case Now let's move to a real story. Yes, this is a real police case, but mystery around it suggests that some sinister and dark forces were involved. Olivia Mabel lived in Texas with her husband and their son Aiden. Unfortunately, in 1990, their son lost his life by accidental drowning in a pond. Olivia was overcome with grief and retreated from work, her social life, and even her marriage. A year later, Olivia and her husband got divorced. In September of 1991, Olivia's husband moved out and Olivia disappeared. Their house was abandoned. Three years later, in 1994, police received a silent 911 call originating from Olivia's abandoned house. Arriving at the house, they broke the door down and entered. The house was a mess, and the air was thick with dust. Searching the house, they found Aiden's bedroom immaculately kept. Olivia was in the room, clutching a crude stick figure doll, seated in a rocking chair. She appeared to have been dead for quite some time, months at least. In front of her was a crude altar, made up of a trunk covered with a child's bedsheets. On the altar were photos of Aiden's drawings, letters written by Olivia to Aiden, candles, flowers, and an urn full of ashes, presumably Aiden's. There was also a note written in a foreign language, which turned out to be Sanskrit, 
In English, it translated to construct or to build. That alone was tragic, but this is where things got very weird. Investigators found another note, dated February 27th, 1994, which was the same day the 911 call came in, but months after Olivia died. The note contained Olivia's handwriting. It read, My Aiden, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I should have never let it get like this. I'm leaving. I will not let you keep me, you vile, evil creature. Mommy's coming for you. The official statement was that Olivia post-dated her letter. But several of the investigators at the scene felt a presence in the house. If Olivia died months before, then the question was, who made the 911 phone call? Paranormal experts were contacted and invited to investigate the scene. One of them suggested that Olivia had manifested a tulpa. A tulpa is an object created through spiritual or mental discipline alone. It is possible that Olivia created a tulpa, perhaps in Aden's. Another question rose if Olivia summoned something that killed her. In 2005, the current owner, unable to sell the property, called a paranormal investigator. The investigator said that in the hundreds of locations he studied, he never felt such an imposing force as he felt in the house. The energy kept changing, but never felt inviting. He said that whatever is in there, it's extremely possessive and behaves so erratically like a jealous child throwing a tantrum. He also said that the house should be entirely avoided because he is not sure what dark force is in there. Number 3. Ettore Majorana Another true story. Maybe not scary, but still very strange. Scientist Ettore Majorana was born in Italy in 1906. He went missing and was presumed dead in 1938 at the age of 32. It was claimed he disappeared suddenly under very mysterious circumstances while going by ship from Palermo to Naples. In the late 1950s, years later, he was photographed in Argentina, still looking the same age as he was in 1938. While rumors of his death circulated, nothing was ever proved, until 2011. On March 2011, the Rome Attorney Office announced an inquiry into a strange statement made by a witness about a meeting with Majorana in Buenos Aires in the years after the World War II, in which he claims Majorana disclosed a number of major scientific discoveries. The witness also claimed that when he went back to meet with Majorana a second time, he had disappeared, and therefore could not provide any more details on the scientific discoveries. On June 7, 2011, Italian media reported that experts who analyzed a photograph of the man taken in Argentina in 1955, finding 10 points of similarities with Majorana's face. They stated the picture was almost certainly Majorana, whom has vanished almost 20 years before the picture was taken. The odd thing was, he looked almost the same age in the pictures from 1938 as he did in 1955. Ettore Majorana was a brilliant scientist, engineer, and mathematician, as well as a theoretical physicist who worked on neutrino masses. The Majorana equation and Majorana fermions are named after him. In 1937, a year before his disappearance, Majorana predicted that a stable practice could exist in nature that was both matter and antimatter. Should matter and antimatter meet, they would both annihilate disappearing in a flash of energy. Some believe that Majorana did some strange experiment that had him disappearing in a flash of energy, only to reappear instantly in a flash 20 years later. The story of Ettore Majorana is a real story, and many say he might be the first ever time traveler. Number 4. From Edie to Seti from one true story to another, but with a slightly different mystery. Dorothy Edie was a normal little girl living with her parents in the beginning of the 1900s, near London, England. 
Unfortunately, one day she fell down the stairs in her home. So severe was the fall that she was pronounced dead on the scene. But just as her body was about to be moved and transported, something unexpected happened. Dorothy woke up. Her parents had their daughter back. However, in 1908, everything changed. On a regular outing to the British Museum, her parents became aware that Dorothy was behaving strangely. As soon as they reached the Egyptian section of the museum, she was transfixed. She couldn't get enough of the artifacts and sat with a glass-enclosed mummy for a long time, refusing to go home. After this incident, things took a turn for the worst. Dorothy became almost depressed and would often stare at photos of ancient Egypt, insisting that the country was her home and she needed to return to it. A picture of the temple of Seti I at Abydos got her especially excited one day. She rushed to her father and shouted that this place was her former home. Dorothy would often have dreams of ancient Egypt and her love for Egypt skyrocketed. When she got older, she moved to Egypt, changed her name to Am Seti, and married an Egyptian man. Their marriage did not last long though. Her habit of going into a trance and scribing random hieroglyphs at night completely freaked her husband out. In her writings, it stated that she was a priestess at the Qom El Sultan temple, who took her own life because she broke a priestess vow. Many discarded her story as the ramblings of a crazy person, up until the day when Am Seti helped archaeologists find the exact location of the temple garden. She also led them to an undiscovered tunnel at the north side of the temple. Am Seti passed away in 1981 after having lived the rest of her life at the temple. No rational explanation for her memories, dreams, and knowledge of Egypt has ever been offered, and many skeptics found themselves wondering if Dorothy Eady was in fact the reincarnation of the ancient Egypt priestess Am Seti. Number 5. Room 322. Let's get into a more recent mystery. One that has actually been solved. Strap yourselves in. This one is long. In 2013, a Redditor made a post on the r slash Houston Reddit about their strange experience in Hotel Zaza in Houston, Texas. I often stay here when on business. Hotel was booked solid and my colleague managed to score a room unplanned. We all had normal style rooms, and he ended up in this goth dungeon closet. Seriously, the room had a chain holding the bed to a wall, pictures of skulls, and a creepy, incongruous portrait of an old man. Room was about one third of the normal size, with the furniture blocking part of the TV, bed, and window. We asked about it at the front desk, and the clerk looked it up and said that this room isn't supposed to be rented. What was interesting was that at the end of the post, the Redditor mentioned that someone offered them money if they delete the post. And to the very new Redditor, offering me bounty to delete this thread, I will totally do it because cash is cash, but I don't want to die either, so let's do this publicly. I'm posting your message you sent to me, and we can meet at the Monarch Bar next week. I'll be in town on Monday and will update this thread when I get to the Monarch so we can meet. The link provided, however, only leads to a page with the photos of the room. The thread reached high popularity, and even the Houston Chronicles got involved and several people contacted the hotel to ask about the room. The room number was 322, and the hotel representative said that it's just a themed room called Hard Times for guests who want a playful spin on a jail experience. This explanation was logical since the Zaza Hotel do offer themed rooms. However, what was strange is that on the list of themed rooms they give for rent, Hard Times is not on it. Interestingly enough, years prior to the Reddit post, the author, Hilary Davidson, had a similar experience. When I checked into the Houston Hotel Zaza at midnight on a Thursday night, there was some confusion. My first room was a themed room, known as the Hard Times Room. There was a picture with the skull on the wall, 
A few minutes after I got there, the front desk called up and said that they had to move me. The people at the front desk were deeply upset at the thought of me being stuck in this room. I told them I was a crime writer, but they insisted on moving me to a normal room. The room is one-third size of the normal rooms, with brick walls, a cement floor, chains attached to the bed frame, picture of distorted figures, and a skull adorning the walls, a large mirror right next to the bed, and the most unsettling of all, a small portrait of a smiling old man in a suit above the doorway looking at the room. A Redditor managed to identify the person on the portrait. Turned out it was a portrait of Jay Stanford, a former executive with Stanford Financial Group, a Houston-based company, which was shut down by the feds in 2009 for running a $7 billion Ponzi scheme. Several people called the hotel to ask about the Hard Times room, but the hotel staff were pretty evasive when the topic of the room was brought up. One YouTuber, barely sociable, was even able to record his call to the hotel. You, yes, you said sir. you, you, you have a full, a full list of, are they the concept suites? Is that what they are? So our suites uh, range from the top level are the Magnificent Seven suites. Um, there's only seven on the 12th floor. And then we have the concept suites, which is on the 11th floor. Um, and those are also themed suites as well. And then under that falls the junior suites. The junior suites aren't themed. They're just um, bigger suites with Basic a little, little more spacing rather than just a standard level room. Okay, so just to go through this, um, oh, so you do got, you guys have photos that you're on the website, so just bear oh, with yes, me. Oh, yes, Yeah, yeah, I just pulled it up. Um, thank you. Um, so just to make sure the, the full list of suites here, because um, I'm going to let the, the girl I'm going with decide. So just uh, you guys have the, the Bella Vita, the Black Label, Fatal Charms, and you've obviously listed the ones that you have available. Um, for your eyes only, it, it happened one night, Rockstar Suite, Tycoon, and then for the concepts, um, so there's no, okay. So there's no other suites, um, like no other theme suites. These are all of them. Just these two. Um, ones. yes, sir. Those are all of them at this property. Okay, and you guys, do you guys have another property in Houston? We do. We have the Memorial City location. Um, is that like a separate website? Same website. Um, if you just go on the on on the top where it says hotels. You select it, and it'll give you the option to select Memorial City or Museum District. Okay. All right. Well, um, I'm going to look through the photos here, and uh, just to confirm, these are all the suites for both properties, correct, in Houston? Yes, sir. That's correct. The suspicion on the Hard Times room kept rising. Was it a secret room only for special guests? Was it a haunted room? Was something sinister hidden? Was the room kept for some illegal activities? What about the offer the Redditor received if they deleted the post? Did they meet? Was the offer accepted? Well, the Redditor said that they did meet, but the offer was cancelled. Rampant speculation ensued that Room 322, known as Hard Times Room, was used as an erotic dungeon, or that it was designed for collecting blackmail especially giving the possibility that the mirror was actually a two-way mirror. And even a theory suggested that the room had connections to the Skull and Bones Society. The Hard Times Room mystery blew up and it was picked up by several outlets like Houston Chronicle, The Daily Dot, Houston Press, and Vice News also covered the story. Years later, a YouTuber, Night Docs, managed to book the room for a weekend. When he entered and looked around, the room has been rearranged a little, which is normal since years have passed since the original post's photos. He took a lot of photos and some video recording of the room. He tested the mirror to see if it's a two-way mirror, and it turned out it was just a normal mirror. Ready to rule out all the crazy theories and speculations, he called it a day and went to sleep. In his Reddit post, he wrote, I live in Houston and decided to check it out for myself, and actually request this specific room and stay the night in an effort to debunk this mystery. I stayed there on Friday, took lots of photographs and video. I did a few tests to see if the mirror was a two-way mirror or not, well, it's not, and feeling satisfied, I went to bed and slept like a baby, feeling like I had finally solved this thing. 
that is until the next morning. The next morning, Night Docs went next door and noticed that next to room 322 was a hotel staff room, which seemed a bit suspicious. Strangely, the door was unlocked, and when he opened it, he noticed a small corridor with a padlocked room that leads right behind the mirror in room 322. However, the padlock was locked, and there was no way he could get inside unnoticed. He writes, Right before I checked out of the hotel, I made one final video where I went next door and showed that right next to room 322 was a hotel staff room, which to some would seem suspicious since it was on the same side as the mirror in room 322. So I opened the door and found what appeared to be a secret padlocked door, perfectly positioned where it could very likely lead to a room right behind the mirror in 322. Although I was convinced that the mirror wasn't a two-way mirror, I now felt like I had to ask, what if it used to be? What if, after the original post in 2013 blew up and got picked up by news outlets, the cover on the room was blown and they had to seal up the wall? Determined to solve the mystery, he digs up some blueprints of the building and looks if the padlocked room was really a secret room right behind the mirror. However, that proved difficult. I found a blueprint of the room showing a secret room behind the mirror. Not only that, but it appeared that the door to get into the secret room was the exact door I found padlocked inside the hotel staff room. The blueprint image I found was on an obscure blog post from around the time that this was originally making the rounds. And although it refuted the claim that there was a secret room back there, I felt like they hadn't taken into the account the door that I had found. Not only that, but this room didn't appear to have any other way to enter it other than through the padlocked door. It appeared to be a bathroom of some sort, which I assumed may have been some sort of cover-up for the room's true purpose as a possible observation room. After some digging, he discovered that the blueprint was wrong and found the right one. However, this is where the mystery fell apart. Upon closer look at the correct blueprint, the padlocked door led to probably a small closet room for cleaning equipment or some electrical paneling and was not behind the mirror from room 322. The person who provided Night Docs with the correct blueprint wrote, That two-way mirror in 322 hangs on the bathroom wet wall for the more spacious suit 321 next door. The bricks in 322 are veneer. It doesn't seem like this room was specially built for any secret activities. I have no explanation for why some owner, architect, and or interior designer thought this would be a good theme for a room though. If you want to see Night Doc's video of him staying in room 322, link will be in the description. So there it is. What was thought to be a room for some secret activity turned out to be just a themed room decorated by a designer who had a strange taste for a hard times theme. Still, the wall decorations are a strange choice, and only the designer can say why those decorations were the choice. Room 322, known as the Hard Times Room, is just a normal themed room that raised speculations because of it being rented by mistake, and its strange interior. Number 6. 42 Months of Interstellar Voyage Granger Taylor lived in Vancouver Island, Canada. He was a mechanical genius that was self-taught. He dropped out of school in the 8th grade. However, at the age of only 14, he built a one-cylinder automobile, which is now on display in the Duncan Forest Museum. At the age of 17, he overhauled a bulldozer that no one else could repair. Granger always wondered how flying saucers would work when flying. He built his own out of two satellite dishes, one top and one bottom, as an inspiration. His flying saucer became a home away from home with a couch, TV, and a wood stove. He would often sleep in his spacecraft. One day, he said he was in contact with extraterrestrials that were going to show him how their technology works. He told everyone he was going on a trip on an alien spaceship. 
Then one night, in November of 1980, Granger Taylor disappeared and left only a note for his family. Despite an investigation, he was never found, nor have investigators found any possible clues as to his whereabouts. His flying saucer still rests in the backyard of the Taylor home at Duncan on Vancouver Island. The note he left behind read, Dear mother and father, I have gone away to walk abroad an alien ship. As recurring dreams assured a 42 months interstellar voyage to explore the vast universe, then return. The 42 months were up in 1984, and on the day he said he will return, his parents left the back door unlocked in case their son shows up, but he never did. A month before he disappeared, he told a friend that he was in mental contact with someone from another galaxy and that he was invited to go on a trip through the solar system. On the night that Granger disappeared, a storm struck the central Vancouver Island. Hurricane winds were reported and the electrical power knocked out. Granger vanished, along with his blue pickup truck, Granger's friend said. He also added, after four years of exhaustive check of historical, passport, employment, and vehicle records, the Canadian police have not uncovered a single clue as to the whereabouts of Granger Taylor. I can hardly believe Granger's off in a spaceship. Granger's father said, If there is a flying object out there, Granger is the one to find it. Number 7. Spectral Black Dogs Now let's move to something more mythical and a bit scarier. Spectral black dogs are supernatural, spectral, or demonic entities originating from English folklore that have been seen throughout Europe, South, and North America. They are usually unnaturally large with glowing red or yellow eyes. It's often connected with the devil, as an English incarnation of the Hellhound, and is sometimes an omen of death. It is sometimes associated with electrical storms, crossroads, barrows, places of execution, and ancient pathways. Spectral black dogs are generally regarded as sinister or malevolent, and a few are said to be directly harmful. Some, however, such as the Gert Dog of Somerset, are set to behave benevolently as guardians, guiding travelers at night onto the right path or protecting them from danger. Sightings are reported from almost all corners of England. Some of the better known spectral black dogs are the Bargist of Yorkshire and Black Shuck of East Anglia. Stories are told of a spectral black dog in Twyford near Winchester. Galley Hill in Luton, Bedfordshire, is said to have been haunted by a spectral black dog ever since a storm set the gibbet alight, sometime in the 16th or 17th century. A black dog was once said to haunt the main road between Bodmin and Launceston, near Lincolnhorn. Blog Dog Hill and Black Dog Halt Railway Station in Wiltshire are named after a dog which is said to be seen in the area. A man who lived in a village near Aylesbury would go each morning and night to milk his cows in a distant field. One night, on his way there, he encountered a sinister black dog, and every night thereafter, until he brought a friend along with him. When the dog appeared again, he attacked it using the yoke of his milk pails as a weapon, but when he did so, the dog vanished and the man fell senseless to the ground. He was carried home alive, but remained speechless and paralytic for the rest of his life. Other spectral black dogs seen in numerous parts of England are Black Dog of Boulay, Black Dog of Lyme Regis, Black Dog of Newgate, Black Dog of Northorpe, 
and many, many more. Stories of spectral black dogs even made appearances in police reports of crime scenes, where officers reported seeing strange-looking black dogs watching from the distance during their crime scene investigations. Number 8. The Immortal Count Now, let's move to something less scary, but something that still remains a historical mystery. For centuries, many wondered if it's possible to live forever. Has someone achieved eternal life? Well, that is what some people are claiming about a historical figure known as the Count de Saint-Germain. His origins are still unclear, but some records date his birth to be in the late 1600s, although some believe that his longevity reached back to the time of Christ. He has appeared many times throughout history, even as recently as the 1970s, always looking to be about 45 years old. He was known by many of the most famous figures in the past centuries, including Casanova, Madame de Pompadour, Voltaire, King Louis XV, Catherine the Great, Anton Mesmer, George Washington, and others. He has also been linked to a number of occult movements and conspiracy theories. Who actually was Saint-Germain? Are the stories of his mortality mere legend and folklore? Or is it possible that he really did discover the secret of eternal life? The date of his birth is unknown, but most historical records say he was born around 1690 in Transylvania. What is known for certain is that he was an accomplished alchemist. He himself claimed to have discovered the secret of eternal life. Between 1740 and 1780, he was quite a celebrity and traveled extensively throughout Europe, and in all that time never seemed to age. Those who met him were astonished by his many skills and abilities. He spoke 12 languages, could play the violin like a virtuoso, was an accomplished painter. There were also rumors he could turn metal into gold using alchemy. He seemed to be a man of great wealth, but was known to not have any bank accounts. He dined often with friends, but was rarely seen to eat food in public. He prescribed recipes for removal of facial wrinkles and for dyeing hair. He has been linked to several secret societies, including the Rosicrucians, Freemasons, Society of Asiatic Brothers, the Knights of Light, the Illuminati, and the Order of Templars. Officially, Saint-Germain passed away in 1784, but he would continue to be seen throughout the 19th and even the 20th century. In 1785, just a year after his death, he was seen in Germany with pioneer hypnotist Anton Mesmer. Records show that he had a lengthy conversation with the Comtesse d'Ademar during the French Revolution in 1789. He allegedly told her of France's immediate future, as if he knew what was to come. She also saw him during Queen Antoinette's execution on the 18th of Brumaire following the death of Duke Denien in January 1815 and on the eve of the murder of the Duke de Berry. The last time she saw him was in 1820 and each time he looked to be a man no older than his mid-40s. In the 1970s, a man who appeared on television claimed to be Saint-Germain. The man took his own life in 1983, but claims surfaced that no body was discovered, just a goodbye note. Number 9. Bermeja Island From mythical creatures and historical enigmas, we move to an island that doesn't exist. On maps dating as far back as the 1700s, Bermeja Island was shown off the Yucatan Peninsula's coast. In the 1970s, the island served as a marker for Mexico. Just 20 years later in the 1990s, the island seemingly disappeared without a trace. It was officially reported missing in 1997 when a Navy fishing expedition was unable to find it. Bermeja Island was found on historical maps between 1535 and 1775 
after which it also mysteriously seemed to vanish from any geographical records, right up until 1857, when a US map once again included it. The island supposedly measured 80 square kilometers, or 31 square miles. Further research in 2009 also turned out with empty results, stirring further confusion as to whether the island ever actually existed. Some even jumped on a conspiracy theory that the CIA were involved with the disappearance of the island in order to lower Mexico's territory and expand American influence in the water. The mystery of Bermeja Island seems likely to remain for a while. Number 10. Haunted Everest Of course, we have to finish with something scary. Mount Everest is known to take the lives of many climbers. The bodies of many of those who perished are still on the mountain. In 2004, a record-holding climber, while approaching the summit from the southeast ridge, came across a group of deceased climbers whose bodies were frozen in the snow. Suddenly, he was surrounded by something of supernatural variety. He said, when I paused at a mound of rocks, I saw black shadows coming towards me, stretching their hands and begging for something to eat. I think those were the spirits of the many mountaineers killed during and after their ascent of Mount Everest. Knowing how punishable the mountain can be to its climbers, he decided to keep moving and not look back. In September 1975, British mountaineers Dougal Haston and Doug Scott were forced to spend a night in the death zone after reaching Everest's summit late in the day. They dug a snow hole and huddled in for the night, unsure if they would survive until morning. The food soon ran out, and their botane heater nearing depletion, their situation was truly dire. Then, the inexplicable happened. Both climbers reported feeling another presence in the snow cave with them, which offered advice and suggestions to help the climbers. Others reported a similar presence having come to their aid on the mountain in their time of need. In 1933, while on his first attempt at Everest's summit, English climber Frank Smite was alone at 8,565 meters or just over 28,000 feet on Everest's North Ridge when he has been visited by some unidentifiable force during his ascent and felt a strong presence beside him as he moved up the slopes. He even took a slice of cake from his pocket to share it with this invisible companion, believing the immaterial entity to be entirely real. On May 2017, Reports reached Everest's base camp about four bodies found in a tent at a camp, 7,950 meters, or just over 26,000 feet up in the summit. The ill-fated climbers were presumed to have died from altitude sickness and were discovered by a team sent up the mountain to retrieve the body of a Slovakian climber who had perished on his ascent three days earlier. When it later transpired that none of the climbing agencies on the mountain were missing any climbers, or at least had none that were unaccounted for, confusion arose as to who the four climbers might have been. Their identities remain unknown to this day, still up on the summit, frozen and lifeless. Many believe the ghosts of Everest will not be appeased or leave the mountain until the bodies of the deceased are given a proper burial. With so many corpses stuck in the dead zone, 8,000 meters, or just over 26,000 feet up in the mountain, and more joining them each year, it is unlikely that the mountain will be a ghost-free zone anytime soon. And there you have it. 10 more real-life mysteries you probably never knew about. Don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. We hope you find these mysteries interesting, and stay tuned for more.